welcome to Psychic Medium Tony Green. I am Tony Green, the Psychic Medium and Channel. Um, welcome to the Wednesday 7 p.m. edition of the show. I'm going to get started right away with a few PSA announcements and we will go from there. First and foremost, if you'd like to call in and ask a question, the call in number is. Um, 845-277-9131. Uh, don't forget to hit the one on your uh, number pad if you have a question. So your hand goes up and I know to um, ask to, to, to come to you in the chat and ask your question. Second, I will never reach out to you on anything and tell you you need anything for anything. Um, if you want a reading, if it's time for you to get a reading, you go to my website, you book that, you call me, we schedule. That's it. It's just that simple. I go live every Monday at noon central. You can call in or join me live on YouTube and ask questions. And every Wednesday at 7 p.m. And I, uh, you can, again, call in or you can ask questions in the YouTube chat. Alrighty, I am going to get started with, I always do names. It can be your name, a loved one up above's name. It can be a, um, a name of someone you both know and love. It can be any of those things. And then I'll go into songs and the song can be a song they loved, you loved, you know they loved, or the song is a message or answering a question for you. Um, so let's get started with that. Uh, the first name I'm hearing is, uh, I, well, it's not, I don't think this is probably a name, but Wahoba. It's also a, um, a type of oil or bean or something like that, Wahoba. Um <laughs> Mariah, Michelle, um, the next name is Riley, the next name is Donald, the next name is Missy, Missy, Monsieur, I really can't say French names, I can barely say American names, so I apologize, Monsieur, um, the next name is I think that's French anyway. The next name is Paul. The next name is Charles. The next name is Jeremiah. The next name is Alexander. The next name is Michaela. And now I'm going to go to songs. And the, the first song that... <sighs> Jeremiah's funny because the first song I'm getting is Jeremiah was a bullfrog. <laughs> I think that's what bulldog bullfrog. He was a good friend of mine. <laughs> so Jeremiah's going that extra mile to get his message across tonight. Um, the next song <laughs> I'm getting, it's so funny to me because I think, okay, I said the name, whoever that's for, they have it. No, no. Then the person comes through and says, well, I'm going to double down on that. I'm just going to, we're doubling down on my name. And there's that. And then there it is. Okay. <laughs> Oh my goodness. The next song is Devin. Uh, the next, oh my gosh, they are really the next name. I guess I'm back on names is Devin. And then um, the next name is Destiny. The next name is Rachel. The next name is Mark. They are really running the show tonight. I've, I've lost control of the show and we are literally not even five minutes in folks, not even five minutes in. Um, <laughs> the next name is, is, they're like, you think you're done with names, but we're going to show you you're not done with names. <laughs> okay. Uh, the next thing that they want me to share is there's somebody who has a tattoo 
of a, and I'm just pointing to this part of the body. It can be on any part of the body with the date, the name and date of the person. Um, so that, that is it, uh, what they want to, um, say. And the next song is by, um, ah, oh, something Nora, Nora, something, um, fly away with me. That really soft kind of bluesy solely song. That's, excuse me, that song, um, the next song is if if I were your man, um, and then any other songs? Um, they they're just saying make me a believer, make me a believer. I don't know if that's in a song or not, but that's the statement that is coming out. Um, is make me a believer. Um, and then that song, Alleluia. I really like that song, you guys. I really like that song. Did you guys ever hear the version of that song? That the, I think it's that song that she's singing into a, like a well. It is so beautiful. I really, I really do like that song. Okay, um, anything else, guys? Uh, I already said Paul. Well, there could be more than one Paul here. Forgive me. Um, anything else, you guys? Anything else before I jump into it? So, and then somebody is saying St. James. St. James. So whatever those, that, whatever all of that means to you, is whatever that means. I'm going to go now into a, um, into uh, taking callers and answering, answering questions in the chat. Um, if you do have a question, you can call in 845-277-9131, um, or you can type your question in the chat. Hey, hey, Joy, how are you? I'm going to go to 860. 860, what's your name? Oh. And where are you calling from? Hey, Tony, it's Amla. How are you? I'm good, Amla. How are you? I'm doing good. Thank you. Excellent. Um, yes. So it's, <laughs> it's been very topsy turvy. Um, and I just basically, I don't want to get into the uh, story of it. I just was wondering about my certain two family members. There's just a lot of conflict. Um, just was wondering, do you feel or sense when that might be tapering off? It's well, just, it's very nutty. Yeah, I'm so sorry for that. Well, the first thing I heard is that that's gonna like continue through the month, but near the end of the month, it will subside and things will go back to normal, whatever normal is for you though, <laughs> which I don't know if that's good, bad, or indifferent in this case, but um, there is a lot going on now. And then in mid-April, things are going to like flare up again and be quite chaotic um, through mid-April. Now, this might be because of the eclipses coming in in April or something else, but whatever yeah. it is, in mid-April, yeah. it's going to a flare up again. It might be a different topic or reason for it to flare up, but it's going to. So just, you know, take a deep breath, get through it the best you can, and allow yourself to be at peace. And, you know, here's, here's one thing that I would say, and I know it's very, very difficult. Um, be the observer. Um, even though you're, you're probably trying to do that already, uh, just be the observer. Yeah. Just yeah. watch the dynamics. Don't take sides and let, and this is the statement I'm hearing, Amla, let the toddlers fight it out. Okay, love? Yes. Excellent. Yeah. Excellent. I, I really hope that's helpful. Nope. And I'm sorry, there, it's a bit chaotic right now for you, but it will get better. Okay. Okay. 
Can I just say, so just to recap, so like from now until mid-April, it's going to be somewhat of a roller coaster. Yeah, it actually, Is that what you're yes, it, there okay. will be like a week where there's some peace, but then it's going to flare again. So I feel like, Got it. so okay. it, it's going to be, yeah, like a, you're, you're, you are kind of correct in that where it's going to be a bit of a roller coaster going up and down and having, you know, a bit of, um, uh, just up and down. So just know that and do your best to get through it. Don't get involved. Let the, uh, let them have their things and resolve it on their own. And that will be the best thing for you. Okay. Okay. Thank you so very much. I appreciate it. Absolutely. Take good care. Thank you, you. You too. Thank you, Amla. I hope that that was helpful. I always find when adults are disgruntled, if you take one side or the other, you end up being the bad person in the end. So just let the adults figure out the adult stuff and, Keep yourself out of it as much as possible. So I'm going to go to the first question in the chat. And the first question is, Tony, If it's from Joy. Joy wants to know, if you have time, I wanted to ask about employment. I'm supposed to go for another interview. So I'm going to assume you want to know if you're getting this um the, if you're going to get the position that you're going for the interview for, yes, I feel like they are going to make you an offer. I don't know that you're going to love the offer, but you'll probably take it. That was the most hesitant answer that came through like it was so like ah, I don't think you're gonna love the offer but you'll still take it kind of um joy my advice to you is to keep putting stuff out there um and if you do get this offer and of course if you do need a position take the position right away and then keep putting it out until you get what you want okay that's the best advice I can give you. I do feel they are gonna, I do feel like you are gonna get an offer. I think it's not what you expect. That's the best way I can put it. I, I'm not saying it's a bad offer. Maybe what it, what a lot of employers are doing now is in the ad, they're putting, you know, oh, you it pays this much, but then when they offer the job, it's not that pay or it's not those hours. Or if they say you can work from home, it's like, yeah, once a month. Like they're being very misleading in their their um, job posting. So just know that um, I do feel like you are going to really uh, consider it and you probably will end up taking it, even though it might not be exactly what you thought it was going to be. Okay. But it won't be horrible. I don't want you to think it's going to be horrible. It's just not what you're expecting. Okay, I'm going to go to 352. 352, what's your name and where are you calling from? Uh, Matthew Moore from Florida. Hey, Matthew, how are you? I'm oh, great. How are you doing, Tony? I'm doing excellent. Thank you so much for being able to call in tonight, Matthew. Thank you. I'm glad uh, when I try to call it in, uh, there's a music I dance to, so they'll try and put me asleep. <laughs> oh, no, that's not good. So, Matthew, what's going on tonight? <laughs> um, um, let's see. Uh, I um, like to, I'm just, you know, just saying, um, you know, you know, read the book of Thomas about, you know, go on YouTube about book of Thomas, book of Mary Madeline. Mm -hmm. And, um, the way Thomas was saying, um, heaven's not outside of you, it's inside of you. 
Yes. So do you want me to go a little bit into that for you if I can? Matthew? Yeah. Okay. So yeah. there are some statements that have been made. And when you meditate and really get into that, and let's not call it even whether you call it meditation or self-reflective space, you'll have an understanding that everything that's happening happens from the mind and the, that you are not in the world, but the world is inside of you. And the reason there is the law of attraction is because we create it as we go. So if we're going with somebody else's flow and belief of where and how the world should be, that is exactly how it's going to look for us. But if we go within, and this is what most people in power are terrified of, if we go within, mm -hmm. if we really can go within and we can just become the observer, we can see exactly how to create and who we are and what we are and how we are supposed to live in this dimension. Now, many people wonder, and, and Matthew, this is going to be like such a good, long, juicy answer for you. When we're awake, is that the life? Or when we're asleep, is that the life? And I will say both. We are living in both realms at the same time. And when you go into that space of deep, quietness you can just quiet the mind and allow yourself to observe everything you can connect and see everything as it is and as it's supposed to be now you don't want to go so deep that you you are asleep but you want to be in that space where you can really understand um, a certain amount of awareness when I've done this in the past, I've received so much enlightenment and um, I've been able. And, yeah, and that's I, even, that's what, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Matthew. That, that was. Uh, yeah. I'm sorry. No, that, no. Yeah, that's what uh, Buddha was teaching. I like that. Yes. And the beautiful. Be, I like that. Yeah. The beautiful thing is when you're in that space your knowing kicks in so it's not even your brain or your mind it's this higher sense this higher being that you are your true spirit your true reality kicking in and showing you um how it's supposed to be how you're supposed to live where you're supposed to be uh, and what what your what your true soul's passion is and so many times when when we're in this world we are following the direction of those uh, that we are in this world with and the moment that we can go into that space by ourselves and be very aware in that way we wake up if you will that there is no I mean this could go I could talk about this for like 20 hours straight so I'm gonna I'm gonna bring it in now and just say um yes we are not in this world the world is in us and we project out what we want and when we have those things that come into our awareness that all of a sudden we want it like a certain, and yes, I'll, I'll use something materialistic as an example, like a certain vehicle or a certain career, that's our spirit, our highest self, our, our passion coming out and trying to guide us. Um, but the more we can go into that space of silence um, or introspect, the more we can be a part 
of the understanding of what and how this world is really run and what we can do with it at that point. Okay. Yes, yeah, this, this is heaven on earth. Yes, and many people... people some will, people say this is, this is like hell on earth. I was like, I was like no, sorry, this is, this is heaven on earth. Yeah, and... Because I'm trading that, that reality yeah. for myself. One of the things that, that differentiates the people who believe it's heaven on earth in comparison to hell on earth is the fact that the people who believe it's hell on earth are not being guided by their spirit. They're being guided by either their pain or their ego where people who believe it's heaven on earth are being guided by their highest self, the soul, and a higher power of light and love. And that's where it really differentiates and we start to see what they call the division between the people. If somebody believes this is hell on earth, it's probably due to the experience and the choices that they've made, whether those choices are to not let go of pain or the choices that they did something they didn't like and they just can't get over it. Where those who feel like it's heaven on earth, they don't necessarily have a better life or more money. They just choose to live in hope and faith. And that's that's what I have for you, yeah, Matthew. Yeah, exactly. Yes, yeah. Oh, yeah, exactly, Tony. Thank you so much, Matthew. And, uh, I'm really grateful for your call today. Uh, that was very beautiful. I love it. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, thanks. Thanks, Tony. You are so welcome, Matthew. You have an amazing rest I, of the I, night. I, you too. I, I talk to you Friday night. Absolutely, Matthew. I'm looking forward to it. All right. You have a good one, Tony. You too. Thank you, Matthew. Okay, you guys, I'm going to go to the... If you'd like to call in, the call-in number is 845-277-9131. I'm going to go to the next question in the... Um, uh, in the chat. Okay. Uh, okay. Lynn wants to know... Um, Hi, Tony. My name is Lynn, and I'm wondering my timeline on a love relationship for me. Uh, Lynn from Arizona, thank you for asking the question. Um, Lynn, I'm, I'm going to tell you this. The timeline that I'm getting is there is the potential for someone to come in in March. This isn't going to be your ever after person, but you are going to learn some very valuable things. This relationship should not go past two it can be as, as small as two weeks or as short as two weeks, but it should not under any condition go past two months. If you can keep this relationship as a, mm, a friendship, that would be the best for you personally, so you don't get emotionally too invested. Um, but if you do take it past the friendship, it's it's not, it won't be bad for you. Um, it'll just be a little bit more difficult to let go of when it comes time to let go of it. I do feel like the person coming in in March, there are some things this person's not telling you about other relationships or another relationship they're, they're involved in. Um, and that doesn't necessarily mean, it could mean they're in separation or something like that, and they're just not sharing that. I'm not getting I don't want to get all the detail on that. But then, okay, so that's March, which is this month. And then after that, the next potential relation. And yes, there is something you need to. There's something in this relationship that once you're experiencing it, it's going to make you very well aware of what you will and will not settle for. So this is almost like the relationship that defines it for you, where you say, that's it. From now on, it's only this. And then in June, there's the potential for someone to come in that is a much longer, longer term 
relationship. Now, I can't say it's the ever after relationship because that's up to the two of you and the choices you make during that relationship. But it does have the potential to be a relationship where both of you grow in love together. So growing and learning about love and happiness and joy. The person in March will be very difficult to resist. Um, and you're going to think I'm wrong. And that's okay. Many people do. They're like, nope, she was wrong. That is not it. This is the one. I, I, and, and many people also say, well, if this is only going to be two weeks or two months, I then don't even want to do it. But there might be golden nuggets in that that allow you to understand yourself a little bit better, but understand what you want a little bit more also. So that might be important for you, Lynn. So please keep that in mind before you decide to, to skip that one. Um, because if you skip it, you might just end up having to do it later and push the timeline on everything back. Okay, 724, what's your, oh, I'm sorry. 724, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name's Laura and I'm calling from PA. Hey, Laura, how can I help you today? Oh, I was just wondering if maybe I can get a message from my spirit guides on what I should, what's coming up good or what I should be, you know, focus on in the next three months. Okay, I typically just answer one solid question. Oh, yeah, the first one's fun. Oh, okay. So if I'm looking at your spirit guides and they're giving you a message, the first and most important thing that they would want you to know is that this is not a time for you to play around. This is a time for you to get very serious about your life and about your work and about your finances. They want you to re-examine everything with a fine tooth comb and go through it and make sure that the decisions that you're making or I feel like these are maybe something financial. And this, again, remember, psychic, future, not something that's already happened, something that may be coming in. They're, um, to look over it and examine it with a fine-tooth comb because there, you might, there's something you need to be... Um, Putting, putting it together differently. So if I were to say this again or in another way, what they would say is go through your finances and really look at them and examine them and make sure everything is where it's supposed to be and how it's supposed to be, but also a little bit of your work life and make sure that everything's lining up the way you want it to line up. When it comes to your finances, there's something... I don't know. I think this might be something coming in, Laura. I think something like uh, be very aware of your finances over the next four weeks, especially. Um, pay attention to what's going in and what's going out. And I don't know what this is about. They're not telling me. Just be very, very aware of it, of, of any charges that seem a little off or spending money you don't need to spend because something might come in that that will need that money. So just be very aware of your finances over the next month to a month and a half. Okay, that's what they have for you. I'm, I'm sorry it's not a happier. I think even though that doesn't seem like it's a happy message, I think that's an amazing message because it it's. I love the messages that say, okay, I need to be prepared for this. Um, and it could just be one of those exactly. little. No, yes. I think it was very, very good. Thank you. I appreciate you, it. You're welcome. And And just to go just the other way in case it's not an expense coming in, just to be aware of any scammers or anything like that um, on your Well, your that account. almost, that happened, yeah. So yeah, that just happened. Oh, okay. Well, be, pay attention because usually once you're on a list, more will come in. So keep paying attention to it, okay, love? Like they literally scared me. I thought I had to pay $2,000. Like they were threatening me and I never even owned a MasterCard. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh my gosh. And then see, when I told him that, I just hung up. Yeah. See, him. there are so many scammers in so many areas. We have to be careful. Even when I get things in my email saying, oh, this charge on PayPal, I don't even follow, click a link. I just go straight to my account and look at my account. And so that way, exactly. it, it's it's safer that way. But I hope that was helpful. Yeah, Please. So, yes. So right. Because I got scared at first. You get scared. They scare you in a way. They kind of try to anyway. Yeah. Well, they know how to word it. So that's that's the thing. Yeah. That is the thing, right? Totally. So thank you so much. I appreciate it. You are so, so welcome. Thank you for calling in. If anybody else would like to call in, the call in number is 845-277-9131. Uh, or you can post a question in the YouTube chat. We are going to go to Rebecca. Rebecca says, hi, Tony. I was sent home from work the other day. <laughs> I'm sorry, Rebecca. I'm sorry. That would I'm just laughing because that would be me. I would be sent home from work every day, probably for sleeping on the job. But nonetheless, every day I would be sent home from work. I'm sorry, Rebecca. <laughs> okay, compose yourself, Tony. Um, hi, Tony. I was sent home from work the other day, and I don't know what it's about. Will I be losing my job? Also, will my child ever come back into my life? Okay. Uh, Rebecca, she was sent home from work the other day. Um, so you have like three questions in there, and I'm going to try to compress it a little bit. I can't tell you why you were sent home from work. Um, is she going to lose her job? Mm. You know what's really weird is, Rebecca, typically I can get, give me a second to get into this energy because there's something very secretive, something very, very secretive. So I'm having to look at some energy here that's like, if I were to say it another way, behind closed doors. Why was Rebecca sent home? So they're showing me a file, like a manila little um, file thingy. And I open it and there's pages in there, but there's nothing on the pages, Rebecca. Um, so if I were to ask in a different way, is she going to lose her job? I don't feel like you're going to lose your job, but I do feel like it's probably in your best interest to start looking for something else. I just feel like somebody at your work is being very mischievous. And that is the nicest. That's such a nice way for them to put it. Somebody at your work is is um, being very, very um, mischievous. That's the only word they're using what I would say to you, Rebecca, start looking for something else where this won't be the case. Um, and I feel like if you do start looking, you'll find you'll even find something that um, possibly will even pay you more than what you're making right now. And you'll be very happy with it. Um so that's what I have. I know that's not, was she sent home for a legitimate reason? No. Were they, I just, I feel like it wasn't like, uh, I just feel like somebody at your work is um, kind of uh, causing uh, troubles, causing problems and not, um, with no, um, with no foundation to these situations. I'm not getting a lot of information on it, but that is what I'm getting. I hope that is helpful. Um, I'm going to go to the next caller, uh, 929. 
929, what's your name and where are you calling from? Hi, Tony. It's Teresa. How's it going? Good. How are you, love? Not bad. Just checking to see. I have to do a, a, a book of session with you. <laughs> So, you know, you know, I don't yes, hold the confessional thing. I can, I, I, I will tell everybody, but go ahead. We all want to know what's going on, love. <laughs> yes, yeah, I just wanted to check to see if there are any messages that you can, that anything I need to know. Mm. And if anything comes to mind, if not, I can wait. Okay, do you want can you give me a certain area of your life just so I can tap into it right away? Um you know what where I'm currently working, because I am starting to look out, you know, I know where I want to work. But they're going to be relocating the office, I think, um at the end of April. And I guess this is my question. We're going to move from one location to another location. The new location that they're uh, moving to, I'm familiar with it. So my question is, are all of those people will be able to fit at that new location? That's a good question. Will all the people at the office now be able to fit at the new location when we move? Yeah. I, I'm trying to figure this out. Yeah, I feel like oh, they are. Really? I, I feel... They are going to be able to fit, and they're they are being very strategic about some of the moves that they're making, and they're not going to tell everybody all the details as things move forward. One thing I'll say for you, Teresa, don't get involved in any office gossip or communication about this. Just listen to only what the people above you are saying. Go with that, but don't don't be a part of the like workplace conversations about this and anything that would come with that. Uh, they need you to be in a space where you are uh, go along to get along, not not being part of like the gossip, if you will, about this. Okay, love? And that's what- Okay, I don't, I don't even, I know what you mean. Okay, okay, good. And that's really important. Don't, don't have like uh, what they call coffee talks or g water cooler talks. Just don't speculate or have thoughts on anything coming in especially while you're at work it's going to be stressful enough for the move but don't don't add to to any speculations about it okay love okay okay i don't say anything okay because someone told me but i didn't even like that was like three weeks ago and okay i won't say anything Got okay it. perfect excellent thank you for calling in Teresa. i really appreciate it um I am going to go to the next question on um, YouTube. Um, uh, b -b -b Laura, Laura, hey, Laura, how are you today? Um, can I get a message from Spirit on what's coming good? Something good coming. Okay, um, Laura. The first thing spirit wants to say is pay attention to what's going on around you. Don't allow others to change your mind about how you feel about um, certain situations. Also, Laura, the biggest message I would say for you, I know that you might not come. Sometimes we get what we need, not what we want. Be aware of people trying to... Um, coerce or use you make sure everything is fair and you are being taken care of um i don't know i hope that makes sense for you laura i really really do i feel like uh 
that is what they're saying for you for a message right now. If you'd like to call in and ask a question, the number is 845-277-9131. Now I'm going to, um, I am going to um, give a little message here. Um, just some little thing. When we get into a, a situation, a relationship, whatever it is, um, and I, I'm being somebody, somebody, probably more than one somebody needs to hear this because I almost did a TikTok video on it and then I just deleted it. I did the video and then I just deleted the video and they're really telling me to say this again. In relationships, whether it's a work relationship, a, a personal relationship, a friendship, a family thing, as long as the payoff is more than the pain or the pleasure is more than the pain, we stay in that relationship or situation. And I have a feeling that this is really about relationship. Um, it could be a work thing, but I really feel like this is more about um, personal relation, a pers personal relationship. So as long as the payoff is greater than the pain, we will stay. And even if the payoff is equal to the pain, we will stay. Then it, the relationship or whether whatever type it is, we can have the the pain starts to become more often than the payoff. But as long as we're getting still the payoff, whatever the payoff is, we tend to stay in that situation. And the message that I'm getting for whomever this applies to, whether it's work or personal or family or whatever it is, that if there is pain, if if there is a situation, now every relationship can have some turbulence and some awkward moments and some growing pains, but it should not be regularly. It should not be consistent. It should not be more than that. And it should, that should not be the, like you're waiting and you're walking on eggshells and you're just, you know, it's going to happen again. It's just a matter of, of time. Um, when that happens, one of the, th and as difficult as it is, because the longer we're in, even if it's a work situation, the longer that we're in it, the more invested we are and the more we want to make it work out. But there becomes a point where the pain is greater than the payoff. But now we're really in this and we are not sure how to get out. And what I can say for this is just make a plan. Make a plan. And many people will say to me, well, financially and i get it because the we especially right now financially it is very difficult for a lot of people so a lot of people are staying in situations for financial reasons see if you can't become a roommate with someone or see if there isn't a a situation that you can go into that's a little bit safer than what you might be in. For whomever that is for, please pay attention to that comment and start making a plan. It might not be easy to just walk out, but if you start to make a plan and put your plan together and execute it one step at a time, it might be much, much better for you, for whomever that is for, okay? I'm going to go to the next caller who is 918. 918, what's your name and where are you calling from? My name is Shelly and I'm calling from Oklahoma. Hey Shelly, how can I help you today? So, my son passed away a while ago um, and I would love to hear from him, but I would like to know how, like, does he keep tabs on his brother because his brother 
is very skeptical and just, I mean, he believes in God and he believes in everything, but he's just real skeptical whether he, whether Zach, you know, stays in touch or he's never came in a dream. He's never, um, I don't know. He just feels like he might have a message for him and I don't know. Um, I talk to him all the time by calling and talking to someone like you who will, you know, communicate for him for me. But I just wonder if he has anything to say to his brother or, okay. or you know. I so what I'm going to ask you, your son who passed away, his name is Zach. Am I understanding that correctly? Correct. And your other son's first name is? Ricky. Ricky. Okay. Thank you for that. So the first thing that Zach would mm -hmm. say to Ricky is, <laughs> did Zach have kind of a verbose or a more outspoken um, personality? Um, sometimes, yes. Okay. He wasn't he afraid be. to say things the way he would just say them. Right. He wasn't all prim. Like, I, I guess the way I'm trying to say it is he wasn't prim and proper, if you will. <laughs> um, no, he was definitely not. No. And because, his older brother is definitely not worse. <laughs> okay. So because the thing I'm hearing, and I can't even say it on the air, because it's such a naughty, naughty, naughty word. Um, don't be such a don't be such a kitty cat <laughs> um, right, <laughs> about right. this. That's what Zach. The first thing that Zach would say to Ricky: Don't be such a kitty cat about this. Okay, that's the way I could say it on okay. the air without getting in trouble. Uh, and remember, it's right. not only YouTube, my show does air on TV stations, and they will definitely get fined if I use that word. The second thing Zach oh, yeah. wants to say is that um, tell, tell him, I show up first as us um, whenever, okay, first, the first thing I'm seeing is a butterfly. Whenever he sees a butterfly, that's his brother around him. But that's to show the freedom that he has gone through all the, the, the process and he's flying free now. But the second thing he's saying, and I've never had this come through. This is the first time and I love it. Um, is if they, if you or you or your son see a snake or snake skin and especially the snake skin because again he has shedded that and he has moved on now so it's very symbolic both of those are very symbolic of letting go and flying free being free growing into something else so i love that from zach now the one thing he wants to say to his brother is he needs to get it together and start planning for a stronger future um he wants to tell okay. him to like uh, hone in like hone in almost like if if ricky is like like i could do this i could do that i could do this or i i have this going on mm -hmm. i have that going on i have that he's saying just hone into one at a time and make that work and then go to this keep that going and then hone into the second one but do them one at a time because it will be more or just pick one and make it work and then go to the second one. And the next thing that he would want to say to Ricky is to get into real estate investing of some sort. Whether it's, and th this could go five different ways for, for real estate investing. It could literally be investing in real estate or rehabbing houses or buying and selling, buying, selling, fixing up. Whatever that is for Ricky, when the time comes, he really needs to be all in on that and be um, be jump on the opportunity when it comes and however it comes, and don't 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 um, like worry about it. Don't don't hesitate. Um, seize the day, like seize the day. And then he's saying he's right. going to bring Ricky opportunities, but Ricky has to be able to 
settle in and focus on them. Whew, okay, that's what I have for your son. And for you, awesome. he wants to say thank you, Mama. Um, I think, uh, God, I'm going to, I'm hearing that this song and I can't get the words to it, but it's, it's a rap song. So it's probably whatever, but it's, it says, <laughs> thank you. Thank you. Thank you, mama. Something. And I can't get it. I know as soon as the show's over, I'm going to be like, Oh yeah, those are the words, but he wants to say, thank you, mama. You did everything right. You did. Don't, don't second guess anything you did everything right. At some point, we make our own choices and we go down our own little wild roads and we make our choices. And that doesn't mean you didn't do right by us. That's sweet. So thank well, you. And thank you, you did, so you much. did, you really did do right by him and by. Uh, his brother and you know you can he's saying you can take a horse to water but you can't yeah it, it just because you can get to the ho the horse to water doesn't mean it was tame enough for you to ride down to the water <laughs> so, right. so, some horses are just a little <laughs> bit wild and they're meant to be that way so whatever that means for you you should understand that for your situation and uh but thank you mama thank you mama thank you mama okay love thank you so much Absolutely. My pleasure. Really Thank you so much for calling in. I'm really grateful. I was able to get your call tonight. Thank you so much for that, my love. Thank you. Thank you. You are so welcome. Beautiful. Okay. I'm going to go to the next caller on the uh, chat. Um, Colette. Hello, my mother and stepfather touched my daughter then she disappeared and died what does she say about that any hardships in heaven i'm i'm not sure i understand um what you mean by my mother and stepfather touched my daughter then she disappeared and died so colette um uh, if you could 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 give me some little bit on that that would be helpful um what does she say about what what does she say about that any hardships in heaven okay i'm just going to go with what i'm getting here no there there are no hardships in heaven is the first thing that I'm getting. The second thing is um, she's, um, uh, I wish I could hear all the words to this song so that I could tell you. She's saying she's free to be her and all she wants to be, Colette. She is saying she is in a place that is um, glorious. And she is she is showing me white, like a white silhouette of her white, and then all gold, all gold beams, um, or rays, all gold beams or rays coming from from her. Um, and she is showing me don't don't be afraid don't fear don't fear her, uh, her space um, or, or where she is because she is in um, she's just saying she is in, in perfection in perfection she is in perfection and don't fear for her because because it's it's don't um it is um 
it's 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 glorious okay that's what that's the way that she is saying it to me i hope you understand that uh anything from spirit um colette i'm so sorry i i'm not going to say that on air because it will get a strike so i can't use that word on air um I will tell you this, whatever happened here has been washed away. And she is in a beautiful um, space now, okay? I'm so sorry for what you went through and for what she went through also. Um, Karen, uh, anything from Spirit for me? Karen, the first thing I hear is... Um, Yes, there is. And and what, what Spirit wants to say is uh, that song, who sings this? Is it, um, I can see her face. I Oh, God, please don't make me sing it. Let me get the name. They're not going to let me get the name. And uh, I can't, I cannot carry a note. I can't sing either. We'll always love you. <laughs> I'm so sorry. I'm so so sorry. Um, Whitney, I think that's Whitney Houston. Okay, um, whomever a, uh, is speaking to you, Karen, is saying that they will. Uh, I will always love you. There's actually bringing that song through, and they want you to know that um, you you are. Uh, they're also bringing through that song, You Are My Sunshine. I can't get the beat of that song, but I hope you know what that is. And then the last thing that they want to tell you, Karen, is uh, that song, Come Fly Away, Come Fly Away, Come Fly Away With Me, Love. So those songs, Karen, should mean something to you. Um, I think that last song is Sticks. If anybody can tell me if that sticks, I would love that. Thank you so much. Um, but I think it is. If it's not, it's okay. Uh, still, the song is the song. Uh, those are the three songs. Uh, and each song should mean something to you. And each song might mean something different to you. But it's coming from a man on the other side that just simply adores you, Karen. And I want you to know that. Okay. And Colette, uh, you are so welcome. Absolutely um, my pleasure. And again, I am so sorry for what your um for what your baby went through. I hope that that the message that she brought through and the vision that she brought through brings you peace. And is can I please ask Colette how old was your daughter? Um, I, I hope, but I do hope it did bring you peace, and I hope that it helps you to sleep better at night. Um, she wants you to know she snuggles. She snuggles up ninety with you. seconds. Um, when you get in, when you when you sleep, when you're wherever it is that you're sleeping, wherever it is you're she snuggles with you like um into you like like i feel like she's in front of you if she can be so if you're on your side i feel like she's in front of you snuggling her back into you is the vision that i'm getting 60 seconds thank you for 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 asking your question karen it's wonderful to uh, answer those that question for you everybody who uh joined me here today thank you so much